Are the Buffalo Sabres finally turning the corner? What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Sports Talk Buffalo. Before we go any further, remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you guys never miss a video. Also, remember to check out my Teespring store. The link is in the description below. The trade deadline has come and passed, and it didn't go quite as most Sabres fans expected as Kevin Adams made just one trade during this period, shipping defenseman Robert Hag to the Florida Panthers for a sixth-round pick. So why by the Sabres fans, after a what could be described as a flop of a trade deadline, are they so excited about this Buffalo Sabres team, even though they had nine unrestricted free agents that were realistic trade Uh, had realistic trade opportunities for the Buffalo Sabres. And I have two words that give Buffalo Sabres fans optimism. Chemistry and culture. The Sabres have a positive culture in their locker room for the first time in a very, very long time, which is being helped along by veterans such as Craig Anderson and Mark Pissick, Both of these guys were on the trade block. However, Kevin Adams did not get deals that they believe, or he did not get a deal in which he believed would benefit the Sabres more than keeping these guys on the team to help continue the growth and development of the young guys. Now, leaving them on this team has done tremendous things for the Buffalo Sabres culture. And it has helped turn into a lot of positive things on the ice. It has helped create chemistry amongst all of the teammates on the Buffalo Sabres as they now enjoy playing with each other. They play together. And it is really showing with their on-ice performance as the Buffalo Sabres have been absolutely dominant in the last 10 games. Now, the Sabres fans are optimistic, especially after the trade deadline, because we all understand what the Buffalo Sabres are this season and what they're trying to accomplish. And they understood, we all understood, that trading away guys like Craig Anderson and Mark Pissick and and Vinny Henestroza, guys like this, that it wouldn't be worth it to trade these guys away and potentially stunt the development of guys like Dylan Cousins and Rasmus Dahlin and and Peyton Krebs and Casey Middlestad. It wouldn't be worth it to trade these guys away and get a couple of late round picks in order to say we got something at the trade deadline. Because what we did get at the trade deadline is we got the Buffalo Sabres having or continuing to have that culture that I just talked about a few minutes ago. These guys are absolute keys in order to help continue developing what we all hope is going to be a winning team in the near future. So why do I believe the Buffalo Sabres are finally turning the corner after all these years? Well, for instance, or for starters, the Buffalo Sabres are on a three-game win streak. This is their first three-game winning streak since the beginning of this season. And in this latest three-game win streak, they beat two playoff teams and one playoff contending team. They are 5-1 and one in their last six games. And they are 7-3 and three in their last 10 games. Now, that 7-3 and three record is tied you heard that right, is tied for the best record in the last 10 games in the entire NHL. The Buffalo Sabres are playing their best stretch of hockey that they've played all season. They're playing their best stretch of hockey that they've played in very, very recent memory. And the light bulb seems to seems to have clicked on for the Buffalo Sabres. In these seven wins, five of them were against teams that are currently in a playoff spot. And two of the wins were against teams that are competing 
for playoff spots. So it's not like the Buffalo Sabres are beating bottom-feeding teams and artificially inflating their win record. They are beating very, very good teams en route to a 7-3 and record in their last 10. They have four one-goal games in this span, which means to me they are learning to win close games. And when it is close late in games, they are not panicking. They are not playing outside of who they are. They are continuing to play the same game that they did throughout the entire game. And that is leading them to be able to score late goals, score overtime goals, or win in shootouts. It appears they have found their clear number one line for not just this season, but potentially the next few seasons. In Tage Thompson, who is centering Alex Tuck and Jeff Skinner. They have combined for 10 goals and 8 assists through these last 10 games, led by emerging superstar. You heard that right. He is an emerging superstar in Tage Thompson, who in his last 10 games has 5 goals and 3 assists. That gives Tage 27 goals on the season. A season in which most people had no expectations of what Thompson would be. Don Granado puts him in in the center position, which he was originally a center. And he has absolutely excelled beyond most Sabres fan belief. And he is turning himself into a legitimate number one center. Now, in my opinion, the potential moment that the the Sabres turned the corner this season was winning an incredibly, incredibly emotional game against former Buffalo Sabres captain Jack Eichel. Of course, it was news all year long until he got traded to the Vegas Golden Knights in exchange for Alex Tuck and Peyton Krabs, both of those guys who are in the Buffalo Sabres lineup currently and are producing in the Buffalo Sabres lineup a first-round pick, and some other assets. It was an incredibly emotional game. The, the crowd was into it all game long, and I feel like that that was the moment that the light bulb turned on and everything clicked. I feel like that that was the moment that all doubts about who the Sabres could be and who the Sabres are left the locker room. The Sabres understood who they were, and the Sabres are continuing to play that exact same brand of hockey. That moment wasn't too big for the kids, and they did not falter at all in that game. As a fan, it felt like that that was the moment, as I said, that it all turned around for the Buffalo Sabres and that the team gelled in as one, and they have all they are all now starting to play for each other and with each other. And they are doing tremendous things. Since that game, the Buffalo Sabres are 5-1, outscoring their opponents 15-8 in those five wins. And as I stated earlier, the Buffalo Sabres are 7-3 in their last 10 games, which is tied for the most wins in the last 10 games, tied for the best record in the NHL over the last 10 games. Now, do I think the Buffalo Sabres are going to continue to be this hot? I don't think so. However, with the games remaining, I believe the Buffalo Sabres are going to play over 500 hockey, and I believe we're going to start to really see that who this team is down the stretch. Craig Anderson has been tremendous. Dustin Tokarski and his few starts has been very good. And the Buffalo Sabres are now looking as looking like they are potentially ready to take that next step next season and be a potential playoff bubble team. Something that we have not been able to talk about for a very long time. Something that we have not thought the Sabres could be for a very long time. And if you look at when the Sabres have been healthy this season, they have lost the second most man games to injury this season, injury and COVID this season, the Buffalo Sabres could potentially be right in the mix 
for a playoff spot this season. That is how good they have been when they have been completely healthy. This Buffalo Sabres team seems to have finally understood who they are, and they are playing tremendous, tremendous hockey because of it. That's going to do it for this episode, guys. Thank you for listening. Once again, remember to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you guys never miss a video. I talk Bills. I talk Sabres. I talk UB Bulls, men's basketball and football right here on this channel. Thank you guys all for watching. Have a fantastic week.